Willowville has been in existence since 1961. So that makes it about 60 years old today. Um, at its peak, which was in the 1990s, Willowville was producing 9,500 units per annum. And it used to produce both passenger vehicles, pickups, as well as delivery trucks, three and a half ton to eight ton trucks. So those are the kind of products that Willowville has used to make. Uh, today, uh, Willowville is only making pickups, but with uh, sufficient aggregate market demand, we can actually produce other vehicles, including those that we've produced in the past. Uh, I am, of course, happy with um, the policies that uh, the government has uh, announced, especially at the end of last year, which are in support of more production locally. I must indicate that the important issue here is not so much about Willowville, but about the motor industry value chain, because that's what actually benefits the Zimbabwean uh, economy. There are people that would produce local components that would then be used by Willowville. Such people as uh, the guys in Bulawayo who used to produce tires. I believe those companies are still there and may be looking into how they can restart that production. Uh, the people who are making radiators and a lot of other components. So that is what we actually believe is the more important aspect. Uh, it is not about the factory here in Harare or the one in Mutare, but actually about the motor industry value chain and its impact on the economy. To put it into perspective, you don't actually uh, make vehicles simply because you want to make vehicles, but because of its impact on the, on the economy. Firstly, uh, we must start by the market. We had a decline in the market, a significant decline. Uh, to put it into perspective, last year, all brands in Zimbabwe, brand new, sold around 3,000 units. Whereas in the past, the total market used to be between 20 to 25,000 units. And uh, that was really primarily because of other economic issues, but also because the support uh, to the industry uh, was not uh, the same as it used to be. Um, so there were, for instance, changes to the tariff regime, the duties applicable and so forth, and that affected uh, the capacity um, to produce um, the vehicles more competitively. Uh, the statutory instrument 89 of 2021 is a very good step by the authorities in encouraging investment in the motor industry. It is one of the key pillars that supports a viable motor industry because it aggregates or contributes to the aggregation of market demand. So we expect that the other pillars that are within the motor industry development plan that was uh, promulgated in 2018 will also see the support from the authorities. So we are encouraged as the players, but we also believe it encourages those investors, both local and possibly foreign, to begin to invest further into the local motor industry for production. We would need to first of all focus on the domestic market, uh, obviously, before we go to uh, the global market. So in order to do that, we need to capacitate not only Willowville, but those motor industry value chain players that produce uh, components that fit or feed into Willowville and uh, the other motor uh, manufacturer in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. When we do that, it makes our products competitive, number one. It, number two, it actually brings in um, the competitiveness 
in an export market and thirdly it also encourages the rest of the industry to invest uh, in the production of these components.